Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mawani and the day today is 13 September 2017. Let's see what we have got in the Hindu. But before moving ahead, please allow me to introduce all of you to our pen drive and tablet courses. Now, if you are preparing for SSC, Bank, UPSC or any other government exams like State Public Service Commission exams, then let me tell you that we have different and separate pen drive and tablet courses for all these exams. There are other exams as well. If you want to know about it, just check out our website or you can give us a call on this number as well to know more about this pen drive and tablet courses but one thing that I can tell you is that if you haven't got it then you should get it because it will help you immensely with your preparation now today we have many items to talk about uh, some important editorials are here some important article one of the most important article is about why India is not clocking that much growth what are the issues we will talk about that in detail but let's start with slow creep this is about the petrol and diesel prices that have crept the the editor has uh, very well used the word crept crept basically means slowly creeping you right there are creepers there are trees that are called creepers they do climb but uh, they do climb and they use other solid uh, other solid items right uh, sturdy items like trees and they creep and they slowly climb up so this is the same way how petrol and diesel prices are going up since last three months it was on june 16 when the government decided that uh, the petrol and diesel prices basically the oil prices will be decided on daily pricing policy right this was introduced in june 2016 now but without uh, the the smart thing what government has done by introducing this thing is that since last uh, uh, say for example uh, since last june when this daily price policy was introduced the petrol price in delhi has gone up by rupee five rupees but you haven't we haven't seen any sort of anger or criticism because it increases in pesas right 50 20 pesa 30 pesa in this way it is slowly creeping up so we hardly realize and this is not turning out as a sort of protest because what happens is any rise in petrol and diesel prices is going to affect each and every person if you don't have vehicle as well you may say that i don't have vehicle but you would be using transport system you would be using a sort of shuttle or you may maybe hiring taxi or rickshaw and they will also increase the price because they have to pay more for their petrol or diesel now this sort of thing is uh, government is saying that uh, we have done it because uh, whenever there is a fall in international price when the international price of crude oil is down at that point of time we can pass the benefit of this downfall to the government but the thing is if we go through the figures then we find that uh, it is it is not convincing us right many people have termed this uh, uh, this policy as a ploy that means it is a game played by the government uh, let's see what the figures have to tell us now see in 2012 right we buy crude oil in barrels right uh, so in 2012 it was 120 dollar per barrel so if you buy one barrel of crude oil it will cost you 120 dollar at that point of time the retail price of petrol when i say retail price i mean to say all the taxes whatever they have uh, that are been applied on it it is applied now you are standing on a petrol station and now you want petrol so retail price is was 65 rupees in 2070 the barrel price is 50 dollar and at this point of time we are paying 70 dollar as uh, i beg your pardon 70 rupees for one liter of petrol now the other thing is that we have got gst one nation one tax but still if you go to Maharashtra, if you go to Delhi, if you go to Gujarat, Rajasthan, other states, petrol prices will be different, diesel and petrol price. Why is it so? I will tell you in the next slide. Let's focus on this thing. Now, what government did, it had it basically deregulated, right? You will find a word in this editorial, deregulation. What deregulation basically means is that before, like say for example, uh, in the case of petrol, till 2010, right this petrol was not uh, it was regulated it was not deregulated so basically government used to provide us some subsidy on it so if the petrol used to cost 50 rupees right to us in retail price then there would be five or ten rupees that was a sort of loss that government used to make so it was providing subsidy to everyone in 2010 it was removed from petrol it was 
later removed from uh, diesel in 2014 because we know that all the uh, heavy engines of uh, trucks of train and uh, all, all the ship uh, they work on diesel so any price going up or deregulating it would uh, uh, cost or sudden deregulation will definitely go because lots of goods and things are transported using these vehicles so it is going to increase the price for everyone so inflation may go up so that's the reason it took all the time anyways uh, now they have uh, removed like now totally these two items is uh, deregulated they are are re deregulated so now they work on demand and supply so if the demand of say for example suddenly if there is a, a demand of petrol in china crude oil in china if they have high demand and if the supply is limited then china will say take extra money give us all the petrol and oil right they will bid i'm just giving you a small example so here as i told you the supply is same right and if china is uh, sucking away more diesel and petrol then naturally whatever is left is going to face the bid as well so the prices may go up so this is a thing that we are exposed to now and uh, traditionally fuel prices were determined on cost plus basis if you don't know what cost plus basis is then uh, it is very simple to understand what cost plus basis means say for example if you want to sell uh, let's say uh, you want to sell a mobile phone say for example right so now you will manufacture you will purchase battery uh, other important items then you will assemble the whole phone and then you find out that it will cost you 100 rupees for doing all these things now you want some profit on this thing as well isn't it so you will say right i have done this one mobile phone is costing me 100 rupees and if i want to sell it i will sell it on 20 percent profit so it would be 124 if i want to buy it from you then i would have to pay 120 20 rupees is going to be your profit and 10 rupees is all the expenses included so earlier it was cost plus basis method that means if the government uh, was able to purchase oil say for example 60 rupees per liter in india right if from saudi arabia if it arrives here and then it is distributed everything is sorted then if it if the total figure is 60 rupees then you have to pay 60 rupees that's what cost plus cost plus basis used to be because government here is not making profit out of selling petrol to us it is uh, that's the reason you don't find any sort of profit here right but why we the main question is why still the prices are rocketing why they are going up and up there are two basically two culprits here one is excise duty and the other thing is VAT. now excise duty is basically anything that is manufactured within the country on that thing you can apply or the government can apply excise duty you might have heard about customs duty as well that is something coming from outside for that you have customs duty excise is basically something manufactured in india or domestically now remember we produce or we purchase crude oil we are not purchasing raw petrol or diesel we purchase crude oil we refine it here and then it is sorted out that's the reason one of the main reason why excise duty is applied then you have VAT, value added tax now it may sound a bit strange but this is reality if you don't know that uh, this five items that is crude oil natural gas aviation turbine fuel diesel and petrol this five items there are other items as well that are out of gst like uh, alcohol is there but we are not going into those that details here we will focus on these five items these five items are out of gst so still the old indirect tax regime is applicable on it and remember excise and vat both are indirect taxes as well if you find a question in your prelims that uh, lpg that is liquefied petroleum gas is out of gst or not then the answer is it is yes it is under gst but if you get a question like natural gas whether it is out of gst or not then the question is then the answer is yes it is out of gst right so keep this thing in mind now in fact about half the prices that are paid by indian and consumer right for petrol goes towards paying these two taxes imagine it would have cost us 35 rupees if we remove this nearly 35 rupees tax on petrol uh, this all duties together excise and vat 
and this is one of the main reason as i told you earlier that if you go to different states you have different prices of petrol and diesel the government excise collection has gone up as well see from 2014 to 17 2014 it was 99000 somewhere around 1 lakh crore now it is two and a half lakh crore rupees so we can imagine how much government is making out of it because remember the barrel price is nearly half it is um, 50 dollar at present somewhere around 50 dollars so government is making huge amount of money out of it anyways uh, the solution that this editorial suggests is that even if we apply gst of 28 percent which is the highest slab even if we apply it on petrol and diesel then as well it is not going to be that much costly what it is costing us now because as i told you 50 percent is tax and if we apply gst then it's just 28 percent even the highest slab so it's going to be a bit cheaper for everyone if government can sort this thing out if it can make a bit more affordable then it is going to be beneficial for every single person as i told you everyone gets affected because of the price the second one is uh, from usa now this one is not that much important directly for your civil services examination but for general awareness uh, we will go through it uh, go through some important items now here you have dsea that is dhaka i don't know how it is pronounced uh, this is something alien for me as well but anyways uh, on 5th september president donald trump decided to uh, risking the deferred action for childhood arrivals what basically this thing means is that say for example if uh, you are say for example you are married and you have kids and now you decide to go to america and you want to live the rest of your life in america and you want to achieve that american dream so you go there with your missus or your husband and you have small kids as well now you haven't got proper documents or you went on tourist visa and now you are out of reach now you are working there somewhere right on cash on hand and uh, then you have as i told you you have some children's as well so now what will happen after many years right you finally as they will grow up you will send them to school they will have their own friends over there and in future they may also find job or they would be studying or doing something and something with their life right now the government comes out with a law that all the parents who have illegally immigrated in this country and their kids as well will be sent back so of course for you you committed a crime so to speak for a country because you were illegal my uh, illegal migrant over there uh, but the thing is basically illegal immigrant uh, to be precise a migrant and immigrant they are two different things if i go out from india then i'm migrating if i'm coming to india from myanmar say for example then i'm immigrating though are or i am a sort of an immigrant anyways so uh, your kids right they have integrated with the lifestyle of usa they have all their friends over there uh, their whole world is there right now if the government is coming out with a law then it is going to be detrimental for them for keeping this keeping this situation in mind obama uh, President Obama at that point of time decided that if these people, if the kids, right, of these illegal immigrants, if they are working properly, if they are behaving properly, if they are not involved in any sort of criminal activities, if they are paying their taxes, if they are good members of society and if they are contributing to uh, uh, the society, then there is no point of sending them back because uh, they don't know or their whole culture is here, their, their life, in fact, started in America itself rather than in the, in the in the home country of their parents or the origin origin country of their parents but with this dsca what uh, donald trump has said that there are nearly like say for example eight lakh people who are going to get affected because of this thing and there are eight thousand indians as well now if this thing happens as i told you if they are sent back or if a law comes out and if they are supposed to leave the country then it is going to then many people are going to lose their job driving license university seats and even Many of them would be deported back to their parents, uh, their parents' uh, country of origin. So we have to wait and watch the Congress, that is the Parliament of uh, USA, that is going to look after whether it is coming out with a law, whether it is providing any sort of leniency or not. We have to wait and watch for that. Moving on to another item, that is on Japan. Uh, we have talked about Japan in detail yesterday, particularly about uh, this uh, Shinkansen, that is the bullet train. Uh, but let me tell you some other things that are associated with this thing 
Now, as I see, we know that pri President, uh, I beg your pardon, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is in India. He's going to he be here tomorrow as well. And there are going to be many discussions and many things are going to come out of it. Of course, we will analyze it in detail once uh, things are over. But by time, we will keep ourselves updated with whatever is going on. So, uh, at the end of the visit, we don't find ourselves that we don't have any clue what's, what was going on. Anyways, so Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Mr. Modi are going to meet today, right? And uh, main items are going to be maritime security. Maritime security basically means security related with ocean. Ensuring that there is no privacy, ensuring that uh, if you are passing from any ocean say for example south china sea any any sea or ocean then you are not stopped by any other your your uh, merchant ships are not harassed by other countries uh, these are the things right basically maritime security also ensuring that there is um, no sort of um, any sort of uh, what do you say a clashes uh, within the countries uh, they that form or that that lie on a sort of ocean ocean highway the other item is nuclear energy as i told you earlier that uh, japan is the only country that was attacked by uh, nuclear weapon india has not signed a non-proliferation treaty and then as well japan has decided to go ahead and do a sort of nuclear deal with india this is in fact this indicates how much japan and india are cordial with each other the, the depth of the friendship and one more important thing is that USA did had a, made a deal with us, right, a nuclear deal in 2008. But then as well, we were not able to do anything because the companies of USA are basically a subsidiary of Toshiba. Toshiba is a Japanese company. So until and unless we don't have this sort of tra uh, agreement, nuclear agreement, civil nuclear cooperation or agreement with Japan, we cannot do or we cannot move ahead with USA. This is this was. The main hurdle but now it is all sorted anyways uh, so nuclear energy is going to be the talk trade between both the relay both the countries how and how we can increase trade with each other how bilateral trade can go up and up and the other thing is that they also want to make a sort of uh, asia africa gro growth corridor that is going to be uh, using ocean and sea indian ocean and all the Ch south china sea and pacific ocean is going to be used for trading or sending and bringing goods from all the way to Japan to Africa so in this way uh, less fuel will be required and less pollution will be there because uh, transporting anything over the water is uh, cheaper and requires less energy but the main focus is going to be this high-speed train Sinkasen which I which we have talked about these are the points if you have missed any new listeners for you guys what you can do is you can check out yesterday's video that means 12th September 2017's English the daily Hindu analysis from which you will find uh, the, the previous uh, discussion and uh, I did include this picture as well you can go through it now Sinkasen has emerged as a symbol of Japan's post World War two it is believed that this is something after World War two Japan started uh, building itself up right uh, i decided rather than going for war and this sort of disruptive activities we will focus on education health and skill we will we strive to be one of the best or the most developed country and uh, since then it is it has been innovating it is focusing more on quality products etc and uh, the sinkasen that is their bullet train is no doubt their engineering might and uh, imagine till it has been nearly five decades 50 years since it is in operation earlier uh, its speed was half of what it is now or less than half but now you can see it is it can clock 330 32 kilometers per hour this is a very f high speed isn't it and uh, interesting thing is that no accident has ever took place in this bullet train which we need something that is very uh, it's a very touchy topic for India because we have seen recently railway minister has to resign isn't it now despite the admirable track record Japan is struggling to export this bullet train to other people or to other countries uh, and why it is doing all these things why it wants to sell this bullet train because 
it is end of the day it is a sort of a product for japan itself it has developed a product and now it want to sell it it may look a bit strange because generally we buy cars and books and phones and things like that so it sounds very strange but remember there are deals going on between different countries regarding buying planes and boats so why not trains isn't it and japan has been doing it japan has sold so far one successful deal that japan had uh, is with taiwan taiwan is a small country that you will find uh, not too far from china so they have made a successful deal with taiwan and uh, the other important uh, important thing regarding this bullet trains this super fast train is that profitability it is a big pain to keep or this trains in in a sort of uh, it is very difficult to generate profit out of it if you don't have these trains fully loaded with people right means uh, all the seats are occupied if this is not the scenario if they are not operating in busy route then you would hardly make money because uh, there are other routes say for example in europe most of most of this fast train are in red when i say in red that means that is a terminology used in economy that if something is in red that means it is uh, making losses and if they say if something is in blue right here it is not the word green it is blue so if something is in blue then that means it is healthy it is making profit the other important item regarding this thing is that or the other competition that Shinkansen is facing is with uh, Shanghai Maglev this is Chinese bullet train and uh, over last decade over last one 10 years china has developed 22000 kilometer high speed rail network can you imagine how fast china is and this train can clock 430 kilometers that is 100 kilometer faster than shinkansen isn't it so this is the thing and the other thing is it is cheaper and because of uh, its uh, cheaper prices uh, and all these things it is attracting many middle income countries like Thailand and Indonesia though the projects are not completed here in Thailand and Indonesia they are still hanging but anyways for Japan the Mumbai Ahmedabad contract has been uh, hard won uh, they see that the the support that Japan provides uh, to us uh, they have given 12 billion worth of loan at 0.1 percent interest and we have to pay it back in 50 years time taking care of 80 percent this is 12 billion is basically 80 percent cost of the project that has been as i told you yesterday this is a sort of soft loan this are uh, this is the nature of a uh, soft loan uh, it, but the interest rate would be very low the paying back period would be very long and in this way it, it does not look like a burden and on the same side you have more people or you have more good technology and it will ensure good uh, commutation for people from Ahmedabad to Mumbai so we will be able to make it uh, we'll hopefully we will make good profit out of it and pay back the loan on time and uh, the other important thing is that Japan is also providing its technical assistance and training with it now coming on to most important uh, article of the day that I have found in the Hindu this is very important now we have heard that economy is going down isn't it we have talked about it now remember that it is the central statistics office before we move ahead with economy let me tell you that it is CSO central statistics office that releases the GDP data this sort of questions are found in your prelims if they ask you who releases GDP data in India then they will give you tricky options like RBI finance ministry central statistics office and or ministry of Cent, uh, statistics and implementation if they this is the case then this ministry or this particular department is responsible for releasing GDP data now what it has said or the gross domestic product data GDP data for the first quarter right is released uh, recently and quarter basically means for some students who are quite new with their preparation let me uh, elaborate a little bit that one quarter means in one quarter you have three months so we have 12 months in a year so a division of three months three months so from april may and june that is one quarter so another set of three months and three months so we have four quarters in a year so the number showed that for the first quarter we are talking about april 
to June 2017 18. The reason why we write this thing is basically <coughs> 2017 to 18 because our financial year starts from April, 1st April, and it ends on 31st March of 2018, right? So, April 2017 to 31st March 2018, that's our whole financial year, 12 months. So, you will f always find this sort of numbers 2017-18. So, the number shows that quarter 1, that is April, May, June, at this month, we had the GDP grew by 5.7 and the GVA, that is gross value added, grew by 5.6. So, basically, even if, if we try to uh, calculate with the help of GVA or GDP, we have not crossed the 6% and the way things are going on, uh, it is hardly that we will cross 6.5 in, uh, in the whole years. Some total won't be or the average won't be 6 or plus 6.5. Let Anyways, the other thing is if you correspond it, if you, if you match it with the last year, then we find that in the same period of 2016-17, it was 7.9 and 7.6 now the thing is say 7.9 and 7.6 then basically we are talking that we have dropped two percentage point now why we have dropped or what are the things now there are many articles many people talking about it is the demonetization it is the gdp no doubt it will have some impact on it uh, not gdp sorry gst it will have some negative impact on it because anything new when it is coming like GST then people would be skeptical they would be afraid they don't know how to do it etc etc so these are the things that will uh, that took place and there are some areas there are still this sort of panic is going on the other item is demonetization we don't have it uh, there was a cash crunch and uh, before that everything was working on cash 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 so at that point of time there was a slowdown so yes these two are there but it cannot be responsible for 2% drop. Now, there has been, if we observe the figures, that then we find that there has been a steady decline from first quarter of, now you know when I use the word first quarter, I'm sure everyone knows it right now. So, first quarter of 2016, it was 7.6. Third quarter of the same year, it was uh, 6.7. As you can see, it, is, it has dropped and since then, it is dropping, dropping, dropping. So this is one of the main reason and given the growth rate of 5.6 at present, uh, as I told you, it would be difficult for us to cross 6.5% for this year. Now, uh, other, another important item is that manufacturing is also not doing well, right? And uh, we have basically three sectors, uh, primary, secondary and tertiary. So the secondary in which manufacturing is also included so in this manufacturing is not doing it was clocking somewhere eight or nine percent growth but now it is somewhere at 1.2 so this is one of the reason the other thing is we had a very good um, we had a very good uh, agri monsoon and uh, last year as well it was good so this year we have good monsoon so we won't find any sort of uh, drastic jump in the agriculture output so it is not going to be that much helpful because the situation is going to be as it was when it comes to agriculture so now let's dig down a little bit and let's see what we can find out so growth is basically fueled by two things remember there are two things that can fuel growth one is domestic demand and one is external or you can say international demand now, domestic demand basically means if everyone in our country, if everyone wants food, everyone wants uh, new vehicles every after three or four months, if everyone wants new mobile phone, new tablet, and uh, the new furniture, everything new, new clothes, just imagine. Then you will find many companies coming up and it would try to fulfill this demand. If suddenly they find that Indian people are not saving, they are spending, spending, and they want more and more and more of everything so this is a demand that took place in domestic market and because of that there will be many people who will start to supply it on the external side it is basically foreign people right American people wants more sugarcane from India they want more biscuits from India if they want more cloth from India etc etc then that is something external demand that can drive and this has helped a lot we know the case of China Everything you find that there was a time that everything that we find in the world it was made in China. If even if you go to Dubai or England and if you buy mobile phones, then you will find it is made in China. And 
this indicates that and this was how this was one of the main reason china clocked this much high growth and it's applicable to india as well between 2005 and 6 and 7 and 8 we did the same thing so this is the thing uh, but one of the arguments attributed to lower growth rate is the poor performance of external sector that means why we are not doing that much good at present one argument is that it is the external no doubt the global scenario is particularly the advanced economies advanced economies are the ones who are consumers right they are the ones who have money with them and so they are the ones who are demanding products so and at present scenario is not good in america or in europe and because of this thing uh, the demand is down so this yes there is a slight of demand but if we if we if we focus on the export then we don't find there is any sort of drastic decline in the things that we are exporting so this is again not the main reason investment has been down fall in investment rate this is another thing uh, that took place with us the fundamental problem has been the sharp fall in investment rate public investment rate has not gone down public investment means government investment if government has money then it will invest in the market it will invest in many different things so this is not down right it is as it is but it is the private investment when we say private investment we are talking about corporates and households corporate basically means you know the big adanis and ambanis and tatas and there are other many companies as well that fall in the category of corporate and when we talk about household we are talking about small houses right houses in the sense that people who have money housewives or husbands when they have money they are rather not investing in the market they are not uh, giving it back in the market and then you have uh, unincorporated enterprises small businesses right they are also not uh, investing that the money or the profit they make back in the market because they don't feel that it will give them that much return on the other side the growth that we had so far is a sort of jobless growth we have talked about it in detail and it is also a sort of underemployment is found in unorganized sector in organized sector which is a very small uh, part of our economy so we know the data even then in organized sector we are not able to create that many jobs and in unorganized sector we are relying on surveys to find out what's uh, what things are going on but here as well we find that it is uh, the scenario of underemployment now how can growth occur what are the things that we can do either you can uh, utilize the existing capacity so if say for example you were able to make 20 chapels at a day and if you have all the tools and things then if you if you have all the tools through which you can make 50 but you are making 20 so what you can do is you can try to make 50 and in this way you hopefully you will be able to sell it and the business will go on on the other is if someone can give you money or if someone can invest in your business if someone tells you that remove all this old methods and tools how about if i give you a machine you press this button you would be able to produce 50 chapels in 20 minutes so this comes with investment you need money to buy all this technology so if we see the investment scenario then we are at it speak the fdi the highest so far right this time modi ji has been saying this that uh, it's uh, the fdi is at its all time peak of 60 billion imagine 60 billion dollar we are getting from fdi but this money is not being it's a, even then if we are getting this much money and if we don't don't see the market or the, the the growth going up this way that means this money is used in acquiring old assets rather than going into new projects this is the main problem here that fdi is coming it looks nice but it is not used for acquiring new assets new businesses are not opening up right we don't find new factories and things taking place here and there or throughout the country this money is used for purchasing old things so what can be done it is the the, the author who is uh, former rbi governor says that we have to stimulate private investment private investment is down the sentiments are down so if we can if we do this then we would be able to get it right now he has provided four points the first one is we have to create a sort of investment climate we have to create a climate 
uh, we have to create a climate here in our country that if someone wants to invest then they will look at us we have done some necessary changes like gst and bankruptcy court but still there are many things that we have to do second is that banks are at its poor health we know that how npa is troubling banks and um, to sort it out as soon as possible they have to do some haircut haircut basically means they have to forget some money right if they have given 20 rupees then they have to forget about that 20 rupees and they have to stick with the 80 and start with all fresh uh, their books should be fresh when they start again and government can recapitalize as well and see again if the government is giving money to the banks then it is going to be money less money is going to be there in the hands of uh, government itself so and here we are not to go about talking about 20 or 30 rupees here we are talking about billions and billions of rupees the third thing is stalled projects all the projects that are stalled it's not necessary that all all the stalled projects the one that have stopped somewhere in between are not good some of them or many of them just requires a bit, bits and pieces of uh, touching here and there and they will start producing results so we should do that as well the fourth thing is that small and medium enterprises should also be paid enough attention rather than focusing on just bigger companies basically if we say the bottom line is that we have seen that public investment that is the investment from the government it has been steady or it is increasing but this is not going to help us fly if we want to take our growth rate high then we must revive private investment only through this we would be able to fly back again moving on to another item uh, you have two items here one is uh, about uh, afghanistan and, and uh, this is basically interview of foreign minister we have talked about it in detail yesterday so basically the things that you are here if you have some spare time then you can go through it but or else we have covered important bits and pieces the another item is regarding nancy dupree uh, and uh, here about basically it's about her life but here i found one thing that is important for you guys and that is the bamiyan buddhas right this uh, picture are from afghanistan so this indicates that in somewhere around third and fourth century uh, this buddhism was quite famous and here the holes that you can see they are caves for meditation and this is an old picture you can see here Bumyan buddha and now you don't find them it is not that they have gone it is because the taliban have destroyed it another item is regarding one priest from kerala who was in captivity for one year has been released and he is released from Yemen this is the country here you find Oman here this is Saudi Arabia this is Arabian Sea not far from our country this is Djibouti this is Horn of Africa and uh, you see Gulf of Aden Aden is a very important port of Yemen its capital is Sana and this is a passage from here you can enter into Red Sea this, this area is known as Babel Mandeb keep this thing in mind these uh, sort of straits are important last year there was a question from this area one person dns allows dns basically means uh, expense right dns anything gets dear that means it gets expensive so cabinet central cabinet union cabinet has decided to increase dns allowance of one person and uh, it has been applied with retrospectively these things are applied in this area only you cannot say a criminal law when a, whenever it is passed it cannot be applied retrospectively right it is only in this sort of items that retrospectively means from july 1st 2017 these things will be applicable cooling off period in hindu divorce supreme court has said that it can go there was a sort of six months cooling off period that means you have six months uh, if a husband and wife they they don't find fence they don't fancy each other or they find that they are going to go for a divorce then government then the court says that hey take six months then you can decide but now supreme court has said that this six month period is going to be adding more pain so rather than that we can get rid of this thing so it is not necessary to wait now this important item a fragile ark the shelters 2626 creature basically 2626 for 2626 it's easier for you guys to remember so geological survey of india has done a thorough survey for the first time this sort of big survey was done in the Sundarbans, which are part of uh, uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, Sundarban is a very big uh, jungle, right? It's a, it's a sort of a marshy jungle. Uh, you find them in uh, parts of uh, West Bengal and uh, 
Bangladesh, uh, the place where these two, uh, it's basically on the Bay of Bengal, right, where the Bay of Bengal meets the land portion. Uh, between this thing, you find this Sundarbans, and they are known as Sundarbans, basically means one, that means jungle, and Sundar is a tree that happens here, Sundri is a tree uh, that happens, uh, that, that are found in this jungle, so they are named as Sundarbans. Now, important items that are found here. I have highlighted it is a rhesus monkey which is the only primate that is found here so keep this in mind apart from that see you find gangetic dolphins here gray and marsh mongoose and uh, the other thing is you find 356 bird species but the important one uh, not the bird species but when we talk about turtle see olive ridley turtle are in use many a time so keep this thing in mind as well that you find them here generally they are found in Odisha coast. They are also found in Arabian Sea as well. So keep this in mind. Olive Ridley turtle, you find them in Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea as well. But predominantly, you find them in Odisha, Od Odisha's coast. Then you have one of the most threatened freshwater species of turtle that is river terrapin. So keep this in mind. This sort of questions are asked. One question last year or this year in 2017's prelims was based on. Uh, on, on karyals that where do you find them so you find one question at least in prelims then 30 snake species you find king cobra here and king cobra is considered as vulnerable by IUC and other items are displayed here go through them as per your convenience and one more lack uh, basically the ministry of corporate affairs has said that one lakh directors of cell companies have been identified and the supreme court has is wondering why the corrupt mlas and mps are able to bounce back why we don't have a process through which they can be chalked or stopped many of mps and mlas their wealth has multiplied 10 times or more than that some of them have multiplied 100 percent increase in the 10 1000 percent increase in wealth has been uh, noticed with this we end this discussion here do let me know how you are finding this lecture but do not forget to get your pen drive and tablet courses dear friends you can give us a call on this number and you'd be able to download this uh, video slide or uh, basically this uh, this lecture slide from our website and telegram channel do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel do share the words and do share this file with your friends because if you are benefiting a lot out of it then there are high chances that uh, your friend or your family member who is preparing for exam would benefit out of it as well if you like this video do give me your like pass me your valuable comment this i end this discussion here i will see you all soon till then enjoy your studies jai hind